everyone, Christina Werner here. Welcome to another video for SimusTheStamp.com. Today I'm using the Home and Heart set from Art Impressions. This is an exclusive set that is only sold at Simus the Stamp, and I'm going to be showing you how to do some no line watercoloring with distress inks. As you can see, the stamp set does come with coordinating dies, so I'm going to be using the dies a little bit later, but I'll set those aside for now. I'm stamping the images that I'll be coloring in antique linen distress ink onto some watercolor paper. This is Fabriano Artistico extra white watercolor paper, but you could use any kind of watercolor paper you might have in your stash. Um, I wouldn't recommend using regular cardstock for watercoloring just because it's not meant to handle so much moisture. So I'm stamping down in that antique linen distress ink and I'm going to stamp it uh, three times actually to make sure I have a really solid line on this very textured watercolor paper. Antique linen is my go-to color for watercolor no line uh, watercoloring. Okay, so here's that packaging from the stamp set. I'm gonna set that out to the side and refer back to it as I start painting. The images that are colored on the packaging have shadows and it, it's just a really good guide for painting. So doing no line watercoloring with our impression stamp sets is a great uh, kind of project if you've never tried it before because you don't really have to think about the shadows or anything like that. You can just take cues from the packaging. So I'm starting out with Vintage Photo. This is a nice uh, neutral brown. It's a, it's a warm brown tone. I, I really like it. I use it on a lot of animals and critters when I do my coloring. After I've put down a little bit of that base color, I'll just drop in some worn lipstick and then kind of continue on painting. So for today's particular painting style, I'm going to do one more. It's basically just two colors for each kind of shape. So I'm putting down pretty flat brown color for the bears, with the exception of putting in a little bit of that worn lips, lipstick on their cheeks, just so they have a little bit of a blush. I basically just want a nice flat brown. And then once I've colored in all of the, the one layer of brown, then I'll come in with the shadow. This is a great technique to simplify watercoloring and shading because you don't have to really worry about, you know, fading out any of the colors. For their snouts, I'm using a little bit of scattered straw mixed with that vintage photo just to give a little bit more of a yellow tone to their mouth and nose area. This is going to help differentiate between those two shapes. Also the fact that it's just a lighter shade in general. So now I'm going to come in with um, a darker brown. This is actually ground espresso. It is uh, diluted quite a bit with a lot of water, but I'm basically just mapping out those shadows. And once again, I have the packaging for the stamp set off to the left of what you can see on camera here. And I'm referring back to that packaging so I know exactly where these shadows need to be. I love to do that for these art impression stamp sets because it takes any of the guesswork out of where I need to place my shadows. This also has a really fun look because the shadows are a little bit more harsh and you get just a very illustrated look. And it's especially nice when you're doing no line watercoloring because the lines disappear and it almost looks like storybook coloring. So I'm continuing on adding more and more shadows. And you'll notice that over on that ear on the left that I've got a little weird watermark. I'm coming back over it and just spreading that color and that paint out and letting it kind of fade back into what I've already painted. And that will disguise some of that harsh waterline. I'm adding more shadows over onto the little mama bear and mapping out those segments and shapes that are on the packaging. So sometimes when you're no line watercoloring larger scenes like this, where you might have two characters, maybe a background piece or something like that, like we have this table here, it might seem a little bit overwhelming and daunting to get started, but just think of it in little segments and sections. So the, the section that I'm working on right now is just the bears. So I'm going to finish painting all of the bear segments, and then I can move on to some other areas of our scene. I used a black fine tip brush tip pen or a felt marker just to put in those uh, details on the, their faces as well. 
for the bear's dress, I just used worn lipstick. So it's going to match the blush on her cheeks. And I just did that flat color all over that area. I did the same thing on the little bear's shirt. I used Stormy Sky. And then I'm going to use the Candied Apple shade. It's a nice bright red to color in this first aid box. So now I'm going to come back and with mustard seed and add color to the jar or the bottle that's off to the side as well. I'm just starting to put in some of the colors into the, the background scene there. I'm now going to take faded jeans and put a nice base color onto the overalls on our little bear. And once that's dry, I came in with another color. I think this was just some more faded jeans, but it could be chip sapphire. Unfortunately, I forgot to show on, on camera what color I was using. So I added that shading in and I added a little more shading with more stormy sky on the bare shirt. And then I used that faded jeans color to add stripes to the bare shirt. I love adding little details like this on clothing. It's a great way to add some detail onto an image, but not have it be too overwhelming. When it comes to shading on the dress, I used more of that worn lipstick shade. I just brought it in not quite as diluted with water. It's more ink than water this time. But adding in those shadows, once again, just using the same shadows that are on the packaging for the stamp set. And as soon as I had that, then I came in and added some dots. Now I switched to a different color for the dots. In this case, I'm using aged mahogany to nice dark red. I thought it would have a nice contrast with the pink of the dress. So I used my heat tool to dry this to make sure I was ready to move on. And then I started painting her apron. For her apron, I'm using some pumice stone and instead of painting the entire area of her apron all at once, I decided to just paint in the shadow areas. And then it was starting to look a little bit too uh, stark. So I brought in just some clean water just to soften out the edges of the gray. And I'll let that dry. I used that same color, pumice stone, to add in some shading on the little table and all of the items that are on top of the table. So then time to paint in the bandage on the bear's leg and also the bandages in that first aid box in the background. So I just did a little bit of that scattered straw shade and then came in with a little bit of vintage photo just to add some shading. I just put some shading on that bandage and the little dots that sort of indicate that it's a bandage. So I'm coming in with more of that pumice stone shade. I just wanted to darken up some of the areas on the apron and I added the darker areas over to the table in the background as well. So this scene is pretty much done being painted. I decided to not paint the flowers off to the side. I kept it simple and just did this one scene. I used the die that comes in the stamp set to uh, cut that out using my die cutting machine. And now I'm gonna work on the background. This is going to be um, kind of the, the floor and wall that are behind the bears. So I've got some hickory smoke over on my palette over there. I forgot to mention for all of these distress inks that I'm painting with, all I did was smush them onto a palette that's off to the side of my work surface here. That just pulls up the ink on the surface and then I can add a little bit of water with my brush and bring the paint over to my project. So I'm using that hickory smoke and adding kind of a shadow layer that will go underneath the bears. And now I'm using some faded jeans and I'm going to add this blue shade um, to the top section. I'm gonna have most of the color concentrated down here where it meets the gray. And I'm actually going to switch brushes here in a minute because I realized that brush I was using was not clean. So I switched to a different brush and now I'm coming in and just spreading out that blue ink that I'm using as a watercolor. I'm letting it kind of fade out near the top and I'm testing it by putting that die cut on top to see if I've colored in enough. And I wanted to add a little more of the blue background on the left side. So I brought in a little bit more of that color and spread it out with my brush. I'm gonna let it fade out up at the top so it has a nice kind of halo effect or a rounded frame effect around our scene. I use my heat tool to speed up the drying process, and then I'm going to stamp my greeting on this card. 
So I've got my watercolor paper. I've placed it in my mini Misty. I'm going to place those bears right on top and just placing them there just so I can get the stamp set, the stamp in the right spot. And I'm going to use the one from the stamp set that says feel better soon. I'll have that nestled in right next to the bears. And once I have that in place, I can remove my bears and then use my Misty to stamp this. So I'm going to put the stamp on the door of the Misty and then I'm using Versafine Onyx Black ink for the stamping. And I'm actually going to stamp this twice because of the texture of the watercolor paper. It's not going to have a really solid line on the letters unless you stamp it a couple of times. And that really has a, a nice smooth line once you do that. So after this, I used my A2 layer size from Waffle Flower just to cut out this scene so it was the perfect size for an A2 card. And I adhered that to a white card base using some dot runner adhesive from Simon Says Stamp. I added some foam adhesive on the back of the bears and then placed that directly on top. At this point, I realized I wanted to add a little more shadow under the bears. So I got more of that hickory smoke color and just painted directly on there. I'm not adding a ton of water at this point, so I'm not too concerned with the paper warping. Speaking of, normally I would have taped down the piece while I was coloring the bears, but I knew I wasn't painting all the way to the edge of the paper and not using very much water. So I thought it would be okay to not use uh, the taped down method, but I did tape down my background when I wanted to paint a large area behind the bears. So that's the reason why I taped down the background, but not the bears. You can get this stamp set over at simusstamp.com. Once again, it is exclusive. It's a limited edition stamp, so make sure you head over there to check it out. Thanks so much for joining me today, and I'll see you guys in another video very soon.